Hello. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, so our next speaker uh, should be starting in a couple minutes, and it's going to be Stefan Bergman. You know, we'll be talking about C++. Stefan, if you're here, can you uh, share your screen? Do you, do you happen to have earplugs, uh, Stefan? Um, can you hear me? can hear you, yeah. yeah. Right. Do you have earplugs on? No, 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 no. Would you mind if you have some? Available? I don't have any around, so okay. we'll have to live with this one. Hopefully. <laughs> Sounds good. Start when you're ready. Thank you for presenting. So yeah, okay, I guess we can start. Um, so welcome to another installment of the C++ Big Show. Um, I guess it will be the timer this year. Um, so let's see, what do we have? Um, so this is the usual status update of um, what C++ features we're using in LibreOffice. And um, meanwhile, we reached the point where we have uh, full support or nearly full support of C++ 17 in our code base in the master branch at least. Um, being a bit aggressive with um, the Microsoft compiler for example, so we require the latest 2019 there by now so that we have a smooth experience which allows us to unconditionally use uh, all these features like structured bindings now um, where you can like um, deconstruct if you have a pair and want to bind both of its uh, members to variables like um, poor man's um, pattern matching for C++ that's available now. Um, we have guaranteed copy elision, so we use that in a couple places where we have some, some class that is uh, non-copyable, but we still want to have some factory um, function that returns an instance of that. In the past you had to use pointers for that and uh, deep allocation and um, you can just return it now because there won't be any copies involved in, in moving it into uh, its, its destination. Um, so that's great, reducing some some mess in the code. Um, we have class template argument deduction. I, I'll talk about that uh, later in some uh, um, example code that I'm delving into. Um, const expression if, where at, uh, at compile time you can decide whether some branch is taken or not. Um, we use it in a couple places, not that many now. Um, it's mostly useful for, for building uh, um, yeah, like um, plumbing functionality uh, deep down in the code. Um, what's also great is all these um, attributes that are now available, like um, fall through and um, so that you can annotate your um, switch branches, switch cases that they fall through to the next one um, where in the past you used to use some um, random commands there. Um, these may be unused and notice card things that uh, are useful to, to um, annotate code that um, like uh, the, the results must not be or must be used or uh, may not be used. We had some, some um, macros for that always um, and then we now could get rid of these uh, and just use the standard waves now which is good. Um, also some uh, useful functionality from the standard library um, tribute things like this clamp function that if you have 
want to have a value that is below uh, within a min max range um, there's a function for that you can use that there's a standard optional we use we have the standard string view come back to that as well um, so all of these are now available across all platforms and you can just happily use them so having that we always want more C++ is always delivering more um, C++ 20 is uh, more or less officially done by now and um, every three years they want to bring out a new standard so C++ 23 will eventually come at some point and bring even more features um, we in the past what we did in our uh, configure scripts was uh, look what the latest flags the compiler supported were and uh, enable them so if you had a compiler that enabled uh, standard C++ 20 or 2A as it was called uh, before finalization uh, then we would automatically pick that up um, it was a bit of a problem in some cases um, because um, some compilers uh, would allow it and, and were just not um, up to the task of, of com then compiling the code um, as what they thought uh, or what they had implemented of, of the latest standard by then. Um, so what I then did at one point is uh, change that into an opt-in situation where if you want to now have something, a compiler that goes beyond C++17 you need to uh, opt in with a configure um, switch of its latest C++, which stands for the GCC clang, uh, enables C++20 if available, and for the Microsoft compiler, use that uh, C++ latest switch, from which I stole the name. Um, for example, there was, a, as Quellen uh, mentioned yesterday, um, the coverity thing doesn't support anything beyond C++ 17 yet. Um, there was something with some, um, yeah, what I mentioned here, the, the bumpy rod things. Um, so uh, some more stuff gets uh, deprecated in C++ 20 so that you would get uh, deprecation warnings about that if you have um, warnings enabled. And some things even got removed completely, like some redundant members from the standard allocated stuff and that was used uh, down below in some boost um, thing, some boost binary map or whatever, and we used that in one place. Um, so I went in and um, updated our version, external boost version that we the bundle. Um, but of course, that doesn't work for um, for other user for for um, for distributions, for example. Um, Linux distros building with their own boost. Um, so yeah, that, that uh, switch now helps to hide all, all the new features that your compiler might not yet support. Um, there's also this uh, uh, upcoming issue with um, the, the, the operators, equal operator, non-equal operator. Um, these now generate or uh, if you have the call of them in your code, then the compiler in C++20 um, now also, besides all the all the uh, overloads that it finds for these and, and checks in order, it also generates synthetic uh, versions of these with like the operators, the, the parameters uh, reversed. So if you have a case uh, where you have your own operator bool defined for a class um, and um, we made a slight mistake there, like it takes its argument by const, but the, the operator itself is a non-const member function, and these two arguments don't match if you revoke them, so you have two um, viable overloads there on synthesized by the compiler um, that clash with each other, so it doesn't know which is the best one to choose, so it uh, gives up and chooses none. Um, this was a common issue with uh, lots of our external code. Um, we sent lots of uh, um, patches upstream to the various um, projects. They happily accepted them. 
So, um, if people, if you have any questions or commands, I um, guess it works if you just um, open your mic and then go ahead and ask. Um, yeah, the new features, um, how useful are them? Are, are they to use actually in, in the code? Not that much uh, yet, because um, of course we have to keep the code in a way that it compiles for both uh, 17 and, and later. Um, so there's not that much that we're using yet. Um, like we have the standard span, um, which is just a, a view of, of something of a range, so a pointer and an account, similar to string view, a generalized string view in a way. Um, we have that as, as, a, as a wrapper in, in that O3 tools uh, thing. And all these uh, other things, these um, clamp and optional and, and string view, they also um, started out as, as wrappers in the the real things uh, over time when they become available everywhere. Um, we have a few places where we, where we use uh, features um, with, a, with an if def, so we check uh, for, for const eval, and we have one place where we check for const init. Um, so const eval is um, similar to const expr, the const expression thing. Um, you can uh, annotate a function as const eval, and then it is forced to evaluate at compile time. But the const expr it, it just tries to compile it, or tries to evaluate at compile time, and when that doesn't work, it falls back to runtime. Const eval, you tell the compiler you have to um, evaluate this at, at uh, compile time, and we'll see one use of that later. Um, const init is similar. It's for variables, so you tell the variable, or the, you tell the compiler you need to initialize this um, at compile time with this value. Um, it's like it, it, it's uh, a const expert variable also needs to be initialized at compile time, but then the variable itself is const, so this is like a non const, const expert variable. And um, yeah, we have one place in the code, I think, where we try to populate a vector and then sort it and then initialize, uh, uh, assign it to a variable or initialize a variable with that. Um, and I marked this with this if def, so um, if eventually compilers come around to that do support this, then we we'll pick that up there. But I think none of the compilers and standard libraries yet um, support it. At least I've never seen it evaluated or, or detected as true by configure or I made a mistake in the configure check notes. Um, so what we don't use, uh, make any use yet of is, is, is uh, new stuff in C++20 like the like concepts and modules of the big new features or even the spaceship operator. I think we could uh, get into using that. So that would simplify um, some cases where you have all the um, comparison operators for a class, and um, with the spaceship thing, you just need to define that one, and it and tells you whether two vari whether two values are less or equal or or greater, and then derive all the op other operators from that, which is pretty useful. Um, so we could if def uh, maybe start to if def uh, that and uh, simplify code over the longer run. So that's um, where we stand now. Um, so I think I, I thought I'll do a little case study of uh, how we actually use some of these new features or, or try to make use of them. Um, and when I thought about a, 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 a good example, um, some code that, that could show uh, or showcase, highlight some of that, um, there's always these wonderful string things um, and um, the benefit is, or the, the good thing is, we, we use them in so many places um, that if you change anything there, um, you'll probably find all the corner cases. Um, 
and also maybe bring some benefit to, to runtime even to the overall time it takes uh, LibreOffice, for example, to start up or to how much memory it consumes and so on. Um, so a little recap, um, what the strings look like back in open office times. We have these wonderful long mumbos that you needed to type every time you wanted to use an innocent little string. Uh, and uh, Lubos thankfully came around and um, sugared that a bit and, and it defetted it a lot um, so that you could actually write something that you could um, read and comprehend um, without getting distracted by all the all the boilerplate um, so once again um, but um, we are still still um, using the same old under underlying layout um, which is that a string uh, is, is nothing but, but a pointer to a ref counted block in memory that has this ref count you see my cursor hope so so that it makes a bit of a sense what i'm talking about um so you have this this ref count you have the length and you have the actual data uh, in there um so if you have a uh, new nice shortly written uh, thing like uh, constructing a string from from an actual literal um, the downside is that this is still an expensive uh, thing at runtime. So what happens at runtime is that um, we set up this variable. Um, the user needs to, to allocate memory for this um, block in memory variable size block where we then um, set up ref count for one and length is three. But we have three letters in here. And then we need to copy over all these. So they are characters in the original string, in the literal, uh, and we expand them into zero, expand them into 16-bit um, uh, UTF-16 units. Um, but we, anyway, we need to copy this over. So there's no chance uh, around that. Um, so that means that whenever there's a, a use of a string uh, at runtime, then that means um, rather expensive memory uh, allocation going on. So how could we improve on that? What we actually want is that uh, all of this uh, is done at compile time. All of these data structures are set up at compile time. Um, and we have this all in the read-only data section. Um, the string data pointing to the block for the ref count that no longer because we would now be in the read-only data section we couldn't no longer uh, manipulate the ref count um, but it also wouldn't be needed any longer because um, this one is uh, is always there anyway it's in the data section um, so it will never go away uh, even if there's no users of it around anymore um, so we thankfully already had a flag for the ref count uh, value for that um, that we use for the empty string uh, mostly anyway yet um, so that indicates um, to the acquire and release functions uh, don't touch this one as it is a static one um, so we just we could just set that one and um, then pre-populate the other values uh, the other fields of the string uh, and be happy and, and uh, get rid of lots of um, um, memory allocations. Um, so C plus plus twenty now does allow const x to code to call new and delete, which is great, but uh, it's only halfway done in a k in a, in a way um, because everything you allocate with new you have to delete again before the const export function is done. So what we could do is um, create this and with the, with the right size so that we have a uh, place for all the members all the string uh, members um, but then what we, we would need to delete it before we are uh, returned from from the function that sets uh, up this data so um, 
that won't fly yet. Maybe in the uh, C plus plus twenty three um, we'll get that. But what what we could do for now is just make this blob, the RTL use string blob, um, static in the in the read only um, data, and then at uh, runtime um, create the OU string. Uh, instance, w which is just a pointer to that blob, um, and which is cheap to create because you just have one then variable that is a pointer, so you just need to fill in the pointer at runtime. You don't have to uh, create any memory and, and copy around anything anymore. Um, you just uh, set this pointer. Um, so that's a compromise that looks like it's a reasonable uh, first step. And um, I showed that that kind of worked. Um, I didn't, um, so uh, we can't replace, of course, all the OU strings because there's many of them that are created at, at uh, runtime from variable data. Um, so not every OU string is, is, uh, is, uh, represents a string constant. Uh, where we could or would want to use this optimization anyway. Um, but we already had a, a, a helper class for using literal um, that is used in many places to hold these uh, constants. That was a nice target for me to, to actually try out these, these things. Um, what it used to be, the string literal uh, was just the practically just a, a, a replacement for a standard string view, so it uh, stored the a pointer to the characters and, and their length. Um, and then there were lots of places in the code, like when you use some some uh, name, some string in multiple places, you give it a name as a variable, um, and then use those. So first step that I needed was to um, um, pimp this uh, OU string that up a bit uh, by no longer t uh, containing 8-bit um, uh, characters, ASCII characters only, um, but to make it take the same 16-bit um, code units that the OU string then uses. Um, so I, I just... Uh, went in with some set uh, script and effectively and, and replaced all these places throughout the code um, to turn the 8-bit strings into 16-bit strings, these 16 string view, this view added in front everywhere, which of course in the, in the resulting um, binaries makes the strings a bit larger because they now contain 16-bit chunks, mostly zeros. Uh, in, in the upper bits, um, but if you look at the results, um, then that was a, a very tiny amount of, of additional bytes that went into a full uh, installation um, layout. So I thought that wasn't uh, that big of a problem, and nobody complained that this uh, move increased the uh, installation set size in any way. So got away with that. Which brings us to the modified uh, string literal class, um, which now has a const expert um, constructor that takes an array of, of uh, these 16 bit UTF 16 U characters, a u little um, and then um, copies them over into the buffer with a very primitive for loop. Um, but that's not much of an issue because we want to do that at compile time always. So this for loop, which looks like um, we should rather use memset or something like that, no, because what you want to do is let that be executed at compile time. And what it does is it fills these um, OU string literals members 
um, which look the same like this this blob that we need um, this RTLU string blob for the ref count the static flag as I mentioned for the length which we compute from the length of this uh, literal that we pass in with the spin literal and with a buffer that we fill uh, in the constructor with this expensive looking uh, for loop and when we have such a thing such an OU string literal instance uh, in, in the um, read only data section um, at runtime then when we want to use it for anything um, we have a new OU string constructor that takes the OU string literal which is a reference or a pointer to that blob that looks the same as the U string RTL U string blob that the OU string actually wants to use, and then we do some reinterpret cast uh, plus const cast for technical reasons magic um, to assign its point its, uh, its data member. So this OU string constructor, which is of course not const expert because we want to execute that at runtime, this is very cheap. Um, so mission accomplished, kind of. Um, the student reader will have noticed we have an N here all over the place um, but we don't define that anywhere so yes of course um, this OU string literal class now needs to be a template um, because it is parameterized on, on the length of the character literal that we pass in so not much of an issue we just add the template thing and because of class template argument detection when we actually use such an old use string literal now um, we don't need to mention the the value of the um, template parameter the length so we don't need to write an angle brackets of three here because the compiler um, can deduce that for us, which is uh, a deal breaker here. If, if we didn't have that, um, all, all, all of this would be rather useless because nobody wants to uh, count the, the, the number of, of the characters that is in your string and then for each instance uh, write the right value there. Um, so without that being in C++ 17, we wouldn't have this uh, improved thing now. But we do, and um, we can nicely now create or, or change all these. Um, or implicitly, we change all these places that use or use string literals um, to instead of at runtime when assigning them to a, or using them in a or use string context, uh, no longer dynamically creating the memory for them and then copying around the string. Um, we have that now in the in the data section pre-computed and just um, create pointers to it in the, in the real string instances. So going back to the this was the um, definition of the OU string literal thing and there's some things around it that we could if we have C++ 20, um, some things that we could improve. Um, the one thing is more of a cosmetic thing that um, we don't need to write out this, uh, this for loop to move over or to copy the data because in C++ 20, many of the um, algorithms in the standard library um, have evolved into const expert um, uh, functions so that a standard copy now is, is const expert so you can use it in a const expert function um, to copy your data that simplifies this uh, for loop a bit and looks better and the other thing is the combination of um, replacing the const expert constructor with a const eval constructor and uh, dropping the initialization of the buffer so 
um, what's that? Um, in C17, even if you have a const expert constructor that assigns to all of the members of this buffer at um, before the constructor starts, all these all these uh, variables need to have definite values um, in for for a const expert thing. So we need to we needed to um, initialize the buffer to all zeros, which is this equals uh, the the curly braces that initial uh, initializes all the values to zero. Um, and then we, we overwrite them in the constructor, which again looks a bit expensive, but of course isn't expensive because all of it happens at, at compile time. Um, with C20, you no longer need to initialize things upfront, um, but the compiler um, takes care to um, watch what parts you have initialized and which parts you haven't. Um, so, if we made a mistake somewhere, and for example only copied n minus one bytes over, um, which would mean we would have forgotten to copy over the, the trailing zero, um, then this buffer would contain a value for which the last byte or the last UTF-16 thing uh, would be left uninitialized. So a compiler would detect this is something that I cannot do at compile time because it would leak an initialized value and that's not something that is a constant function anymore. So because we marked it as const eval instead of const expert, the compiler has to execute it at compile time. So if we ask it to do it at compile time, even for, for a variable that itself is not const expert, just const. Um, if, the, if the constructor was const expert, it would say, okay, I'll do that at runtime, and then we would have an uninitialized uh, trailing uh, byte in there. But if we tell it, you must do it at compile time, then it says, oh, I, I can't do that, your program is broken. So this is a great thing to, to detect um, when you make little off by one mistakes here. Um, so yeah, thank you compiler for, for helping us. So what I did with the, with the existing uh, first code is that I made this, con this uh, constructor's const expert for the C17 case and conditionally const eval for the C20 case so that we would find any 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 mistakes that we accidentally make at least when we compile with C20. And that's it. Thank you. Alright, thank Am you. Am I alone or no there's somebody raising yeah, their yeah, voice. Yeah. We're here. Um, did, did you want to take uh, any questions? Yes, uh, I guess we, um, since there's nothing directly following us, so if we have any questions. Anyone have a question? Uh, Stefan, have you um, uh, got any estimates of what kind of savings there might be from, from the static string? Um, yeah, what I did is 